In this lecture in Climate and Earth 401, we're going to talk about the scale analysis of the horizontal momentum equation, which leads us to the ageostrophic wind. You will need to know the material that is in the lecture on the scale analysis of the horizontal momentum equation. We're going to start from the same place where we ended there, where we're going to be looking at the horizontal momentum equations, the equations for U and V. We're going to be using these characteristic scales that were for the large scale mid latitude flow. And when we do the scale analysis of these equations, we arrived that these two terms, the pressure gradient term and the Coriolis terms, were the largest terms, and this led to the concept of the geostrophic balance. This is the geostrophic balance, which is the dominant balance between the pressure gradient force and the Coriolis force. One of the problems with this balance in terms of us being able to predict the evolution of the flow or to predict the weather is that there's no time dependency. Hence, there is no d by dt term, there's no acceleration. Therefore, the geostrophic balance is generally considered to be a diagnostic equation which is a quick evaluation of whether you've got a good representation of the pressure field and the rotation of the Earth and the influence of the rotation of the Earth on the flow. If we look at a typical weather map, and this one is geopotential at 300 hectopascals, 300 millibars, here's a low, and what's shown here in the blue are the geostrophic wind barbs, and what's shown here in the red are observed wind barbs, which are coming from weather stations in this case, which you can tell by the relatively sparse number of wind observations coming in an irregular grid from these different geographical locations. But just eyeballing this, you can see that the geostrophic wind and the real winds are very strongly aligned and the geostrophic approximation is generally a good balance to large-scale flows. There are, if you were to examine this statistically, scientifically, and quantitatively, looking at many, many instances, you would find that there are some systematic differences, and those systematic differences are going to be especially large in places where there is a lot of curvature in the flow. So now we want to analyze the geostrophic wind. Earlier in a homework problem, we calculated the divergence of the geostrophic wind. And in this case here, what we're going to do is we're going to assume that we're looking at a spatial scale that is small enough that f can be considered constant. And we're going to assume that the density is a function of height only. We will use this assumption about density and using a mean state of density as a function of height only when we look at a scale analysis of the continuity equation. This will be a consistent assumption in our analysis of the equations in several instances. But in that case, then the divergence of the velocity is zero. You can see that quickly, that if you have, again, rho as a function only of z, f as a constant in this case, if you were to take d by dy of the v here, d by dx of the u here, you would have cross derivatives here of the opposite sign. They would cancel and the divergence would be equal to zero. This points up the difficult situation that we're in, that the mid-latitude atmosphere is in a near state of balance. It's nearly geostrophic. It's nearly hydrostatic. There's no acceleration. There's very little vertical motion. Therefore, it's pretty hard to start to think about how do we calculate acceleration, how do we calculate vertical motion, because we know that both acceleration and vertical motion are important to weather and weather forecasting. We know that the acceleration, d by dt, scales in order of magnitude less than the geostrophic balance, and we know that the vertical velocity is many orders of magnitude smaller than the horizontal velocity, and it's just crushed by this hydrostatic balance. But we also know, therefore, because we know there's acceleration, know that there's vertical motion, that is, is the difference from these balances that are important to us. They are especially important to reach our goal of predicting how the atmosphere will evolve in time.
If we go back to the scaled equations, what are in red here is the geostrophic balance. That's very good for analysis. This is used for diagnosis and, and doing diagnostic studies of understanding what's going on. But for prediction, a prognostic equation, we are by definition looking at the ageostrophic aspects of the flow where ageostrophic means literally not geostrophic. But if we just take those terms in the red and the blue on the previous graph and write them down, this becomes our prediction equation for large-scale mid-latitude flows. You should recall that this is an approximation. This is never an exact representation of what's going on. And our equations of motions are really never exact. We are always working with some sort of scaling, some sort of assumptions, some sort of embedded models that mean that these equations of motion are an approximation to what we see. And they are very good approximations at times, but they are always an approximation and we seek approximate solutions to the approximate equations. So there is always some uncertainty in what we do. So what we want to do now is to go back to this idea of the ageostrophic wind and we are going to literally define it. That the ageostrophic wind is the difference between the true wind or the real wind and the geostrophic wind. So that's just this definition. That's something that we can do. It's nothing magic about it. It is just something that we do because of our experience that the ageostrophic wind is relatively small and that this might be a good way to gain insight into the deviations from that geostrophic background. This is simply rewriting those equations that u and v are equal to an ageostrophic part of the wind plus a geostrophic part of the wind. We rewrite this with the idea that we're going to substitute that into our prognostic equations, which is what we're going to do here. So here the simple prognostic equation relating acceleration to the geostrophic flow. We want to write this in terms of the ageostrophic wind. The first thing we do is we pull this F out. So we have an FV and then we have one over F here. That F over F is one. So that's 1 over f rho dp dx. Similarly for the dp dy term, we recognize these terms here as the geostrophic wind and the negative of the geostrophic wind, which then gives us an equation that looks like this. It's a very deceptively simple equation of the acceleration is equal to f times the difference between the true wind and the geostrophic wind. This is a good way to potentially gain some insight into the flow, but it doesn't really solve anything for us at this point. But one of the insights you might gain is that when you see an equation that looks like this, you can think of it as a relaxation or a, almost a spring trying to pull the wind to the geostrophic balance. And it's trying to do that with a time scale that is related to F, in this case, the Coriolis force or the, the Coriolis term or the rotation of the Earth. This is repeating the same equations, pointing out to remember that density and pressure are buried inside of this definition of the geostrophic wind and that the mass field and the velocity field are linked to each other. If we were to do a little bit more analysis of this, then we have that the acceleration, again, it's the difference between the real wind and the geostrophic wind. Acceleration can occur in two ways. There can be a change of direction in the flow while the magnitude of the velocity, the speed, stays the same, which is represented here. That change of direction in the flow can be interpreted as curvature or rotation. There can also be a change along the line of the flow, a change in the speed. That's what's drawn here, where this is a faster wind going to a slower wind, going to a slower still wind. And this will be converging or diverging. And the metaphor that I like here is to think of this as a line of cars 
that's coming in this case to a stoplight. And as that happens, all the cars line up bumper to bumper. And then as you take off, they start to separate again. So here's another map of the geostrophic in the full wind. This one is at 500 hectopascals or 500 millibars. The blue lines are lines of geopotential. The red wind barbs are an estimate of the real wind and the white wind barbs are an estimate of the geostrophic wind calculated from these lines. The real wind here is probably coming from a data assimilation system, which is a sophisticated way to meld models and observations together to provide very good estimates of wind and temperature in particular on a regular grid, which is why you see these, quote, observed winds on a regular grid and aligned with the geostrophic wind. You'll see that again, that they're frequently very good representations of each other. But there are places such here, if you look around here, where, where the curvature is strong, you'll start to see some difference in the magnitude. And then in general, where the winds are weak, you will see some sort of larger errors simply because the flow is weak and it becomes more difficult to make these estimates and these calculations. Some summary points. We've used this scale analysis to extract some information about the large-scale flow. These are rotational flows in the sense that the Rosby number is small and the rotation of the Earth is important. We've revealed these two balances from the momentum equation, the geostrophic balance and the hydrostatic balance. These diagnostic balances are very good approximations, but in the end, we are interested in the difference from these balances to understand the time evolution of the flow. And with that, that's the end of the scale analysis of the horizontal momentum equation and the introduction of the ageostrophic wind. You should also look at the other lectures on the scale analysis of the continuity equation and the thermodynamic equation to get a full picture of what is going on here.